Kaylee, and today I'm gonna to talk about some of my favorite Victorian authors. So I started putting together this list of my favorite authors from the Victorian era, and I am sure that I'm forgetting somebody. Like, I just have this niggling little feeling in the back of my mind, like, I just know I forgot somebody really obvious and important. So leave me a comment down below and let me know who did I forget because I know it's somebody. <laughs> so let's jump right into my list. I'm just gonna um, say who the author is and then I'm gonna say which one of their books is one of my favorites. If I was to talk about all of their books that I enjoy, it would just take too long. So I'm just gonna talk about one of my favorite books from that author. These are not in any particular order, it's just in the order that I happened to think of them and their books. Because I have been reading Charlotte Bronte this month, uh, Charlotte Bronte is the first one on this list, and my favorite of all of her books is Jane Eyre. She has such powerful, emotional writing, very dramatic, and I love it. And of course the next one, because I'm already thinking about the Brontes, is Anne Bronte, and my favorite of her books is The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. This one is full of mystery and intriguing characters. The next one on my list is Elizabeth Gaskell with North and South. This is one of my favorite books of all time, one of my favorite romances, some of my favorite characters. <laughs> There are just so many elements in the writing and the plot and the characters that I really, really love. And class warfare, there's just so much good stuff in there. The next one is, of course, Charles Dickens. And my favorite book is David Copperfield. David Copperfield is a coming of age story with love and betrayal and family and lots of weird quirky characters and one of the worst villains in all of Dickens. Such a good one. Then I have Anthony Trollope and my favorite is Dr. Thorne. This is actually the third or the fourth book in the Barsetshire Chronicles so you do really have to read the whole series in order in order to get to Dr. Thorne, but that one is one of my favorites. I think the thing I really, really love in Dr. Thorne is that it's an underdog story. It's about this woman who is an orphan and it's kind of like her search to claim a family of her own. And I love me a good underdog story. <laughs> Then I have Wilkie Collins with The Woman in White. I love this one because it's creepy and mysterious and strange. You never quite know what's going to happen next in the plot. It is just that outrageous. <laughs> I love the characters. I love the heroes. Oh, it's just so gripping. It's fantastic. Then I have Anthony Hope with Prisoner of Zenda. I love this one because it's full of adventure and intrigue and spies. It has kind of a Three Musketeers kind of feel to it, you know? <laughs> Where they're fighting duels against the bad guys. It's all kind of good stuff. Then I have Rudyard Kipling. My favorite of his books are The Jungle Books 1 and 2. A lot of people don't know, but The Jungle Book doesn't just have stories about Mowgli. It has a lot of other short stories in it as well, like um, Ricky Tikki Tavi and The White Seal, and all of those just fascinated me so much when I was little. All these stories about India and animals, and it's so imaginative. Then I have R.D. Blackmore. I've actually only read one book by this author, and that is Lorna Doone. This is another one that has a lot of great history and adventure and amazing characters and just really immersive writing that throws you into the emotion of the scene. I just love Lorna Doone. I really need to read more from this author. Then we have Frederick Marriott, who is best known for his rip-roaring sea adventures. However, my favorite of his is not actually a sea adventure. It's The Children of the New Forest. This is about some noble-born children who are orphaned and they're taken in by this kind, like, woodcutter forester guy. And he raises them to be able to take care of themselves in the forest. It's such a simple and yet really engaging story, and I love all the details about the history. Of course, I have to have Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and Sherlock Holmes on this list. 
I really love the concise writing style that Doyle has. So it just throws you into the adventure. The home stories all have really great pacing where it just pulls you along through the action. My next one is a Victorian children's writer, Edith Nesbitt, and my favorite story of hers is The Phoenix and the Carpet. This is a story about some children who discover a magical sand fairy who grants them wishes, and all their wishes go really, really wrong. <laughs> It's just completely adorable and so fun and imaginative and silly. I always enjoy Edith Nesbitt's books. Then we have George MacDonald, um, and my favorite book of his is another children's book, The Princess and the Goblin. George MacDonald did such a wonderful job of taking like these fairy tale tropes and then kind of expanding on them. He just takes it to this whole other level that you never imagined. Then I have George Eliot, and as problematic as the book can be, I think my favorite book of hers is Middlemarch. It is a humongous book. It is very heavy writing. It's difficult to slog through, but once you get through it, I don't know, there's just something so meaningful in her writing and it really makes you question things that you had just never thought about before. She brings a whole new perspective to Victorian themes that you see in a lot of other books. And I think that's why I feel like it's difficult to read, but it's worth it. And finally, I have Thomas Hardy, who's not really like a favorite, favorite author, but my one book that I really love of his is Far From the Matting Crowd. Usually Hardy's writing is just way too depressing for me, but in Far From the Matty Crowd, there's actually a happy ending. And so I'm like, okay, this is my favorite. <laughs> I really love the vivid characters in this book. They all feel like larger than life. Like they're just so extreme. And I love that. Next, I have a few authors that were not British Victorian authors, but they were writing at the same time that Queen Victoria was on the throne. So... If they're of another nationality, does that count? I don't know. Anyway, these are my honorable mentions. My favorite book by Jules Verne is Around the World in 80 Days. I just love the different little snippets of different cultures that you get around the world. And it's not like a true reflection of that culture in that time period. It's more like the, the author's imagining of that culture what Jules Verne thought America was like, or what he thought India or China was like. So it's very interesting in that historical sense of the perception of cultures that are not your own. And of course, it's wonderful just for the adventure and the fun as well. Then I have Lou Wallace who wrote Ben-Hur. This one is just full of so much wonderful history of like the Roman Empire. It's set in the time of Christ, so there's these wonderful religious overtones throughout the story. This is another one that has characters that are just larger than life. They're so vivid and extreme, and it really pulls you into the story and makes you feel these massive emotional scenes along with the characters. Then I have Mark Twain with Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. There's just something about Tom Sawyer and all his crazy adventures on the Missouri River. And there's so much humor in Mark Twain's writing. It's ridiculous and funny. Mark Twain is one of those writers where his books are just fun. Then I have Louisa May Alcott with the Little Women Trilogy. I think I love these books partly just for the nostalgia because I read them when I was a girl. But I also love them because they're just full of these wholesome, innocent little stories. I just find her stories really sweet and charming. So those are some of my very favorite Victorian authors and my favorite books by each of them. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know who is your favorite Victorian author or just a classic author that you really love. And of course, leave me a comment and let me know who did I forget? Because I know I forgot somebody off of this list. You guys have to help me figure out who did I forget? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.